Playing poker is the ultimate adrenaline rush, the biggest mental challenge and the greatest Oscar winning performance you'll ever give. At this PartyPoker.net World Open, we bring you the best players from around the globe, all chasing a half a million dollar prize pool. We've seen Kenna James, Roy the Boy and Ken Leonard all after a piece of the pie but going home hungry. Four players have played their way into the semi-finals and we're in for another great heat tonight. It's only the table winner that will make it through though, so you have to take your chances and pull off your A game to get into the money. Let's join our commentators Jesse May and Kenna James. Good evening, I'm Jesse May, back in the saddle with the cowboy, Kenna James. Welcome back, <laughs> Kenna. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, back on this side of the table, uh, it, it's good to be here. Now, you played last week, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I mean, you were very unlucky, but did you learn anything about the structure? Man, did you have to remind me? <laughs> I, I thought I was over it. Was it. Hard. You know, I had to go through therapy, six days straight of therapy, but... Uh, Need no, I mention the river? <laughs> I'm kidding. It was, it, you know, you, you take some beats, you give some beats, it's all part of the game. It was a wonderful match, and I'm excited to be sitting next to you in tonight's action. It's fantastic. We got a lot of great European players. I play with a couple of these players out on the tour. It's going to be a tight match tonight. A lot of experienced Europeans on the table tonight. Let's see who's who and where they're sitting. My name's um, John Wong. I've been playing for poker for three years, about a year and a half professionally. I'd like to say I'd expect to win, but if I say it, I'm going to be disappointed if I don't say so Hopefully, yeah, I'll be seeing you again. My name's Ian Woodley, and I've been playing poker for about nearly three years now. About a month ago, I come runner-up in uh, the Irish Open. I got 200,000 euros. Playing to win. That's the only strategy you can have. My name is Lothar Landauer. I'm coming from Germany, and I play poker around 30 years. For today, my expectation can only be to win the heat today. And in general, I would be happy if I come down to the final table. To be honest. My name's Philip Stars, I'm from Scotland, I've been playing poker for about four and a half years. Hopefully, if I'm lucky enough, uh, I'll go on and uh, maybe win today. Hi, I'm Harry Dimitri, I'm from London, England, and um, some people call me a professional poker player, although I don't actually derive the majority of my income from it. I've had a, had a fair degree of success at it. The biggest individual cash win was the um, Second I got recently at the Mirage WPT Showdown in May 2006 of this year uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, that was worth about $670,000. Just do your best, that's, that's the only thing I ever expect of myself. The rest sorts itself out. My name's Martin Smith, uh, I'm from Belfast. Um, I've been playing poker for a lot of years, maybe 20 odd years, but maybe, maybe get into it a bit more seriously. It was four or five years ago when a big explosion kind of happened online. As long as I can kind of walk away from it uh, and not feel that I've done anything too stupid, I'll really be happy enough with that winner this. Wow, what a lineup! Tough table. Now, Harry Dimitriou, Kenna, he used to play over here in Europe and then he, he was like a pioneer. <laughs> he set sails to America. He jumped over the pond, so to speak. You know, he had stars in his eyes. He wanted to play on the World Poker Tour and now he's done it. Just recently finishing second in the WPT event at uh, the Mirage Poker Showdown. You know, it's many people's dreams to just make a final table. And how about that? He finished second, but he deserves it. He's played for many years and he's paid his dues. Yeah, superstar. Uh, you know, also on this table, John Wong, Ian mm -hmm. Woodley. Recently, I saw them meet in the final of a big tournament over right. in Dublin, and uh, Wong got fourth, Woodley got second. Uh, there's a little wow. bit of a yeah. history between those yeah, two. Yeah, Well, and, and Wong only 22 years old, yeah. so uh, he's the young gun of the competition. And we got uh, Lothar Landauer from Germany, right? He's Mr. Experience. He's been playing poker for many years, so we've got youth versus experience once again. Should be a great, interesting match tonight. Experience plus speed. That's a good combination for a poker game. Let's get over to the table. Six players here about <clears throat> to deal the first hand in this exciting heat. 
of the World Open. Very tough table. And uh, you can see him splayed out. Big mix of experience. Everyone age. poised for victory tonight. <laughs> Players, of course, beginning with 100,000 in chips. The yellows are worth 1,000. The blues are 2,000. The reds are 5,000. And um, there will be only one victor, one person moving on to the semis to play for the winner to take home $200,000. There's Harry Demetrio. I know how much Harry wants to win one of these, Kenna. After everything he's done in America, all the titles, the glory, you know he'd right. love to come back here and win something on European soil. Well, I know there's one Pass. thing that Harry hates, Jesse. Please. Raise. Losing. <laughs> so he'll have his he has his game face on tonight. Yeah, I bet he does. First out of the box. Oh. I believe was Philip Starr. Right, with King Scotland. Queen. And Very interesting. Marty Smith and John Wong taking the flop with both the same hand, ace nine. Right. Martin Smith cold calling on the button, the 4,000, and Wong in the small blind. And how is this going to play out? Check. Very yep. interestingly, Check. both flopping top pair, ace, 5, jack, six. The aces, I expect, to go to war, but not too much because they can't like their kicker. You know, any ace. Raised 14,000. Well, it was all going to be about who got the raise in first, maybe, Kenna, because uh, Star drawing mm. to a 10. But uh, now that Smith has raised, what is Wong supposed to think? Well, yeah, well, Smith is betting his position, you know. And Pass. now this is the problem with Pass. playing these weak aces that uh, you, you never know where you're at, you know, after you do flop your hand. Cool. It was only a 5,000 raise to Philip Starr, and he's going to call to try and peel off a 10. If he does, right. Martin Smith is going to be... Right. It, actually, it was a bet, Jesse. He just bet. He didn't... Uh, he, he, everybody Check. checked to him. He bet. And let's see what he does here on the turn. Check. Starr Bet's does checked. get the free card. Looking for the 10. Couple of diamonds up there, check. but yeah, that's no help. And, and Martin Smith happy to check it down. Right. Now let's look at Ian Wong. Let's see when he sees the ace nine. <laughs> or John, uh, yeah, John, Wong, uh, Jonathan Wong, rather. So Smith with the first hand. He's saying, hey, wait a minute. That's half my pot. That's half my pot. <laughs> Very expressive eyebrows there from Wong. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Well, he rightly laid it down. You know, there's really not many aces he can beat. Ace 10 beats him. Ace Jack is too parried. He drawn it really bad. Cards out. It'll be John Wong in the big blind for 2,000. Still first level here. And uh, there's Pass. Ian Woodley. Raised Lothar 7, Landau. Pass. Pass. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of experience Pass. on this table, but I think you could add everybody's poker experience together and you still wouldn't get the number of years Lothar Landauer has been at it. Uh, That's right. I think Lothar Landauer has been at it longer than uh, Jonathan Wong's been alive. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say Lothar invented poker. <laughs> he was check-raising people while Wong was in diapers. Cool. He's going to... Take a uh, long shot here. The five seven hearts against the ace jack. Let's see if it pays off for him as we go to the flop. It was a pretty big raise. It was a raise of 5,000. Mm -hmm. Check. And Wong's hit this hard. He has. He's got the open end straight, uh, Jess. He needs a three or a seven to complete his straight as we go to the turn. Lotar didn't bite on the flop. And the nuts. Check. Wow. Wow, Wong is saying, please, please oh. throw in some chips. Now, can Wong afford to call here, or should he check raise? Well, that's what he's debating right now. How much can I extract from my opponent? Cool. The lackadaisical call, the acting, you got to love it. <laughs> 22 okay, years old. Okay, I'll throw 10,000 in there just to see what happens. <laughs> you know, I think the look of concern. Ooh, the spade, that might... Uh, that check, yeah. Check, check. That's it. And uh, Lothar's having none of it. He's going to look at the straight. straight. <laughs> <laughs> so 
says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice hit, nice hit, nice hit. Uh, lucky, lucky, lucky for Lothar, he didn't have much uh, to lose uh, with uh, much more in that hand. Okay. Yeah, Lothar was completely done with it. He gave it one stab and that was it. Right. Look at that hand again. It was a draw, four, five, six, seven for John Wong on the flop, but the eight completed his hand. The straight, five in a row. Landauer done up with ace high. I tell you, it's nice being a young guy, isn't it, Kenny? You always make your draws when you're young, don't you? Jeez, I, you know, you could have anything. You could have jack three and get there, I'm telling you. You used to make your draws, didn't you? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'll tell you, Jesse, seriously, this game seems to hold you accountable the more you know. Okay, when you don't know any better, you think, oh, King-10, that's a huge hand, and you win pots with it. But after you start reading a few books and you realize, oh, that's a mitt, it's not a hand, it's a foot, You'll never win again with the hand. It's just weird. I'm telling you, it's happened to me. It's happened in my career. I, I've talked to Race players. Uh, it happens to them all the time. Anyway, back to the action. Harry Demetrio here with pocket fives brings it in Pass. for a raise. Yeah, total Pass. of 7,000. And he's picked Pass. a good big yep. blind. And Woodley not interested. Woodley is yet to move a trip, a chip even. Well, nobody given action so far to Harry Demetrio. I wonder if it has to do with the tie. <laughs> You know, he's got that conservative look with the glasses and the tie and the cufflinks. What kind of cufflinks is he? Uh... Oh, and look at this bevy of uh, luck charms he's got. That's what must be. He's uh, He's got two owls, three? Three owls. I They're mean... all owls, right. except the rock. I've been given a nickname of a wise owl from a, a fellow player called Sarinda Sunar. Uh, I played against him in a rather big tournament in Vegas a couple of years ago. Oh, more than that, about three, four years ago now. And uh, every time he had a big hand, I kept making laydowns against me, against him. And he said, "Cool, you're like an owl. You seem to know whenever I have a really good hand." So he gave me the nickname Wise Owl. Welcome back. Early doors here, but it's the Irishman Marty Smith, fresh from representing his country in the Football and Poker Legends Cup, who's taken the early chip lead. Let's get back to the table. Action here on Martin Smith for two. I've been down in that studio. I can tell you that it does get Pass. hot. Pass. Pass. If the Pass. pressure from the other players isn't enough, Raise to 7, pressure total. from the lights and the cameras can have an effect on you. Keep trying to figure out about that shirt Philip Starr's wearing. It's like he's laced oh. up like, a, like a, a shoelaces or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's wearing a moccasin Jesse, or something. He, I couldn't figure it out. He does. He looks like he's got the pirate the pirate thing going on there. But yeah. uh, I am a <laughs> He's raised to uh, 6,000 before the flop, and Harry's called him in the small <laughs> blind with... I guess you could call it a marginal hand, but... Um, Queen three is very marginal, but he's going to find himself in a little bit of trouble here. As both players has flopped, have flopped top pair, Yeah. but Demetrio is out-kicked. Actually, excuse oh. me, you know what? It's the it's small blind, big blind. That must be why Harry peeled it off. Um, right, because yeah, sure. he was suited. Okay, Marty. Yeah. I have to let the tournament director oh, know. Oh, what's happened here? I'm, 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 Let's I'm go not down sure. to the floor. Okay. Okay. Let's go down the floor and turn called. it up and see if we can. That 15,000 he called. We've not done four street and he's gone all in before the cards came. Okay, just to let you know what's can going on. I, I think, do you think Philip Starr thought that yeah, Harry was raising you know or do you think he okay. intends to go all in in the dark? I think he's mad that you said something about his shirt and he just <laughs> says, screw it, I'm moving in and. Okay, all in. I want to get over there and, uh, and get a piece of Jesse May. Well, tournament director, Mad Marty Wilson has rightly ruled that the verbal declaration stands, and this is a little bit difficult now for Harry D. Well, I don't think so. I think that, uh, you know, um, when somebody moves in dark, <laughs> if, they're, if they're not on a complete bluff, they're telling you, I have a monster. <laughs> that is... I mean, it's pretty, gonna be pretty hard for Harry Demetrio to make a stand with a queen here, especially with a king coming on the flop. 
I mean, he's beat by Jack Nine, which would have made a straight. Uh, there's really nothing he can beat. So yeah, I, I, I don't. I think uh, Harry's uh, like you know he's the wise like the owl. He'll figure this out. He'll say whoo whoo, and he'll uh, pitch those cards in the muck here within the next 20 seconds. Is my prediction. Spot on as huh. always, KJ. I made the line at 20 <laughs> seconds. It was about 12. Good job, Harry. Nice lay down. But uh, that was an odd play by Phil. Phil sorry. I, okay. I somehow feel like that, that he may have thought that Harry raised on the flop and when Harry just called. I don't know. The pot got pretty big, actually. You know, I've done that before myself, moving dark uh, on the turn. You just you don't want to shut your opponent out and say, you know, I'm making a stand. If you want to uh, play, you want to play with me, uh, you're not going to push me around. Did you, you have, have to anything call the last chips. time you did it? Uh, question. <laughs> Here's the leaderboard. <laughs> Martin Smith on top. He's won two pots, 120,000. And uh, not that much movement, really. Harry and Lotar, they're still in fine shape, aren't they? Yeah, of course. It's still early. Anything can happen, you know. Uh, Harry Demetrio and Lothar Landauer are at the bottom, and they have the most experience, so it's going to be interesting. Still one in 2,000. There's not a lot of talk on this table, Kenna. No, everybody's very serious. Raised to 7, Notice, look at Pass. Long. It's the second Pass. time I've seen that now. He throws the chip Pass. high as if he doesn't care when he has a big hand. So that might be a tell that we'll look for throughout this show. See if that pattern continues as Harry Demetrio wakes up with the two sevens. Well, he's it moving with it. Seven plus 14 is triple Pass. the bet. And Long yep. looks like he might be bracing himself for the push. I think so. It's just, I think, I think uh, Wong is probably going to move in here, and then it'll be up to Demetrio to decide whether he wants to make a stand with the two sevens or not. How much more? Is it? You're in the, he's made it twenty-one. Fourteen thousand yeah. more. So it's fourteen thousand more. <clears throat> How much more? I just wants all the information right now. All right, he's assessing uh, the information, calculating, you know, exactly how he's going to play this hand. Should he flat call and take off a flop and see if he can make an ace or a king? Well, the reason most players move in with ace king is so that they can see all five cards because obviously their odds go up, way up, to make a pair by the river and then pair of oh, aces or a king are very, is side. very strong. I said, I don't know. What well, factor might influence him to 60, call? 67 more, so it's 18. Well, if he, re if he looks over at the owl okay. and says, that's a wise so man, he obviously off. has a pair, and he, I can't move him off it, uh, I might just call here and try and make a pair on the flop before I make a move at the pot. I'll tell you one thing that's happening, though. With this little bit of indecision that he has here, that's going to make it more likely that Demetrio will call if he does move in. Because mm. Harry's got to be sensing a little, in, you know, uncertainty from Jonathan Wong at this point. He's really oh. eyeing him down. He does just flat call. Do you think Harry could put him on ace-king right now? Mm, probably not. He probably doesn't even put him as that strong. And see, this is the problem with flat calling, because now he has no pair. And I believe Harry's going to put some heat on this pot and, and probably lead out. I'm all in. All in. Well, that is heat. Yep. And that is some heat. That's the atom bomb being dropped. And this, this now, you know, for Wong is going to be almost impossible to call. Very strong play by Harry there. I mean... He could be beat right now. He, he's uh, he's taking a big chance here. It's real a lot of heart, isn't it? Well, it's like you said, Jesse. He's put him on a big ace, probably ace queen, ace king, maybe even ace jack, and he's trying to protect his pair, and he's doing a very good job of it. <clears throat> well, now the bet is over sixty-seven thousand. 
um, I mean, it's pretty much uncallable, isn't it? Yep, it is, and Wong realizes and folds his hand. So Harry D getting back up to level par and then so with the strong move on the flop. Well, the blinds are just about to go up. Let's remind ourselves how the blinds work in Texas Hold'em. Every poker hand begins with the placing of the button and the posting of the blinds. The button is a disc that represents the nominal dealer. Blinds are force bets to get the action started. The player to the left of the button puts in the small blind. The player on his left puts in the big blind, usually double the small. Action for this first round of betting will be to the left of the big blind. The button moves to the left with each hand, and the blinds are raised throughout the game to keep the action going. This will be Woodley on, excuse me, Wong on the button. Phil Star. The swashbuckler. <laughs> He's a... Uh, well, Pass. Hold it around to John Wong. Pass. And, I mean, Wong has played his button very conservatively. It, I like that, you know. I, I like that because it, it helps to establish a solid image that you're not out there stealing like Eight Woodley is holes. here with the King 3. Total. Trying to pick pocket the German. Lothar. Lendar. Well, Ian does seem to have targeted Lothar here, or is it just because they're sitting next to each other? Well, it might, he might just be playing his hand. Actually, King High, heads up, you know, it cool. probably is the favorite to be the best hand. Although when all, everybody else has mucked, you realize, you know, there's not a lot of big cards out, so sometimes they get clumped up in the blinds, not this time. Flop Let's here. see how this plans out. Yeah, it's a better flop for Lothar, isn't it? Absolutely, a very nice flop for Lothar. He uh, flops middle pair and a straight draw and an over card. You want a hand that gives you possibilities. And uh, Lothar has enough possibilities for him. He's moving all in. All in is the move. This is no limit hold'em after all. And uh, I think Lothar's come in here with a game plan to uh, put other people to big decisions. Well, he's put Woodley not to much of a decision here. He only has king high. The only thing he can be thinking of is that Landar is bluffing him with spades. <laughs> but I'm sure he will get uh, the message correct and get out of the way here in about eight seconds. Well, I've seen Ian Pelé before. I'm definitely taking the over on this call. Oh, you're oh, right again, goodness. KJ. Unbelievable. <laughs> when you can calculate the seconds, ladies and gentlemen, then you're ready for the tour. <laughs> the Lothar taking that fight. But, uh, I mean, it's a good, you know, it's it's a good, strong play by Lothar. First of all, he called before the flop, and, you know, with, with kind of a loose holding and then made the move. Lothar's here to play and accumulate, isn't he? Well, he's not here to be pushed around, that's for sure. Woodley here, second position, 4,000 to call. And does he have to start worrying about his chip position? 76,000. No, the blinds are still Raised. plenty of room to work. But he doesn't feel so. He's going to bring Pass. it in ten to call. with the 10 7 of hearts for a $10,000 raise. Yeah, it's a total of 12, and Stars picked up the bullets here. Two stars, the best possible Cold. starting hand in No Limit Hold'em pocket aces. <coughs> he just flat calls. He's going to let the hand develop and uh, let Woodley uh, step into the trap. Yeah, stars in the small blind. And uh, as you say, we'll go to the flop. King, queen, five, all clubs. And Check. star with the ace of clubs. As if the aces weren't good enough, he's got the nut flush draw. Check. So he's content to let a card come off. Woodley's in terrible trouble here. He's nearly drawing dead. Actually, that gave him an out or two. All in. All in. Wow. Right here, he's going to try and pick it up and not give Woodley a chance to make his straight. And 
I think he rescued him here. If he checked, Woodley may have moved at this pot and he could have gotten his whole stack. Instead, he's content to take it right here as I can't see Woodley calling this bet. Kenna, when you slow play aces, the, it also gets very scary fast, doesn't it? I mean, sometimes does the pot get away from you? I mean, okay. well, it does and it can when the board develops bad, but that time it was all clubs and he had the ace of clubs, so he was safe all the way around. Lots of betting action around this table. These boys certainly aren't afraid to put their chips in, and they're right. You've got to be in it to win it, and coming second gets you nothing. Let's catch up with Jesse and Ken. So, Philip Starr, slow playing aces. Mm -hmm. is, this, is this the kind of cagey game where you have to trap to win a big pot? Probably, we're gonna wait and see if there's a hand develops where both players uh, you know, flop a big hand because you usually lose the most chips when you make the second best hand and nobody's made a, a, a big enough hand to lose a lot of chips yet. Who's impressed you the most? Any golden halos out there? <laughs> well, they've all played very well. I mean, uh, Smith starting out, taking control of the table. Um, each player getting away from some key hands. Harry Demetrio from the Queens. And uh, Wong laying down the ace uh, at the beginning of the hand shows that he can get away from a hand. So it's just as we predicted, Jesse. It's a, you know, it's a tread lightly, protect your chips, and wait to make the big hand sort of a tournament. Only the beginning of this concert, just the overture so far, but the first movement is coming up now. These players all very calculating in their movements, their decisions. Just a feeling a chess game could break Now, in Woodley game. with the ace king of diamonds, this the best thing you can do when you're struggling is pick up a big hand, oh. and Woodley's done it here. Pass. But he Pass. likes to flat call from early position, trying desperately Pass. to get some action Pass. from the field. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's got a Pass. very loose image right now, doesn't he? I mean, he does. I, I, I'm surprised that nobody's taking a pop shot at him. And the only reason that Wong is in this pot is because he was in the big blind. He's going to get a flop for free. Just get the feeling that Wong's gonna hit this flop. He hasn't. All right. Check. Five, five, check. nine. Yep. Check. Both checked. He's gonna slow play this into oblivion. Jack of hearts. <laughs> it's check. getting uglier for Woodley. Yeah, I think he should put in at least a little something here before this pot is taken away from him. Check. Well, there's 10,000 in there, and for Woodley, it would mean a 20% increase on his stack. And there it is. He I, he just let okay. this pot slip away. Could have easily won it with a bet on the flop or the turn. And oh. now once he's beat, he's going to make a bet. 10,000. And it may be too little too late if Wong sniffs this out as a bluff, which... He's trying to figure out what Woodley could have. <laughs> yeah, he's saying, well, he either was slow playing a monster or he has nothing. So as young as this young man is, I think he's going to sniff this one out. It's very confusing. I mean, you wonder. I was gonna say, what Woodley thinks he can get Wong to pass that. And he does. he does. Made it awful tough on himself, but he still ended up taking down what ends up being just the blinds. Sweated a little bit more than he had to there, Jesse. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the most, uh, that's, that's, that's masochistic actually. <laughs> yes, it certainly was. But Woodley takes it. Sometimes just everything goes wrong for you. I mean, it Kenny, sure does. I mean, he came in that pot looking for action like a, uh, you know, like um, a rhino. Pass. Like a rhino. Oh. <laughs> Rhino's <laughs> looking for action. <laughs> Think about when a rhino oh. looks for action, he never gets it. <laughs> but two limpins here. Phil Starr and Harry oh. D. John oh, Wong nice. happy to peel off the flop from the small blind. And I think we're going to be four away for about 16,000. No race. It's King Jack versus King 10. And 
Jack 7 in the mix, and also Jack 10. Jack's abound as we go to the flop. If a king, jack, or 10 hits this board. And there's not there's not many left in the deck, so it'd be hard check. for him. And let's see if the person in position yep. wins check. this pot. Check. Check. <coughs> check. Four four checked. Which is Harry Demetrio. Three of diamonds. <laughs> now that gives him also the second nut flush draw. That should be enough to win it for Harry Demetrio. I'm sure he'll put in a feeler bet here on the turn. And nobody with nothing, much of anything, can call him. Oh, John 000. Wong deciding this is stealable because he has absolutely nothing. Absolutely right, Jesse. Pass. He's going to go ahead and represent the five because he was in the blind. So it's very reasonable that he could have a five. So Pass. as the players look at him, they're thinking, well, he's betting the straight. So this is going to make it a little tougher for Harry to win this pot now. So that's 14,000, yeah? 14,000, yeah. Could very easily just pass here. Yeah, you know, this is a close call between a pass and a call and even a raise. I don't see him raising. Uh, it pretty much seems to be out of the question in case his opponent does have the straight. But with only one card pass. to come, he... Uh, ascertains that it's not worth worth uh, the risk in, uh, in folds. Well, that was a good example of how to win a hand with nothing just by representing, I mean, Wong, showing he wants to win every chip possible. Good bluff there by John. He's one of the most exciting young players on the poker scene at the moment, with an impressive final table result recently in the Irish Open. And they call him the dragon, so the others had better watch out they don't get singed by another move like that. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net World Open. Everyone's getting busy on the table, but only the winner can move on to the semi-final stages and take a step closer to a $200,000 top prize. Let's get back to the game. You know, when you see a game where the chips move as, as little as this in the early levels, is, is it like the early levels are wasted, Kenna, or is it, I mean, has someone wasted an opportunity to accumulate chips? There's no waste. You know, uh, you're know, you assessing your opponents, you're, you're gaining information on how they play and what they play. So if you're paying attention, uh, nothing is a waste. Uh, you're gaining information and uh, getting Pass. familiar with your opponents. Harry Demetrio here with King Queen of Hearts. He's made it 11,000 under the gun, and Smith thought for a while and then folded the pocket pair. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, Demetrio carries a lot of respect. Results will do that for you, and he has some, especially as of late, earning over $700,000 this year playing a game called poker. Yeah, that's big money. Woodley now Pass. again in pain. Pass. Pass. Folds the ace <laughs> and gets out of his way. And, uh, there's no easy pots here, although no one competed, but it was a lot of tough folds. There he is, the chip leader. He'll feel pretty good about how this level has gone, I would imagine. It was an early short stack. Well, none of the players giving anything up, Jesse. And the chip leader, just a mere 25,000 above the starting stack. Nice little holding for Martin Sorry, Smith in first position. Race. The only short stack, Ian Woodley. Up to 12,000 total. Look at this. Smith now with the Cowboys pocket kings looking for action. Yeah, he's fast played it here. Just triple the bet. He's just hoping someone will, someone will give him some action. And Wong. Looks primed to do it. Well, he's got a pocket pair. Pocket pairs, five and six handed, very oh. playable. Wong calling to try and flop a six and take it away from him. Woodley's only got 52,000. Well, he sees an ace. He sees two suited cards. He may be tired of the pressure. He may be ready to snap and just say, let me get it in here and get it over with. He did put both hands on his chips, didn't he? 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a false start in track. Well, I mean, all he has to do is get it over that line from black to green. It, if he gets it over that line, Jesse, it'll be like a long jumper stand, stepping on the board. <laughs> no, see, actually, it's the white. Is it the white line, isn't it? Yeah. The center of the table. He's got about six inches to move those chips before they're in. What do you think he'll do? I think he'll come to his senses and flat call. Pass. Pass. Tentacle pass. Better yet, the fold. <laughs> Poor Martin Smith was sitting there just just willing those chips in. He wasn't, uh, he didn't let out a peep, but uh, head up flop here. Here we go. Wong looking for a six. Smith looking for a flop with anything but an ace. And it suits both of them. Smith well. gets his wish. Looking for the check raise, Jess? I'm just wondering about that. Is he, he's trying to figure out how to get maximum value here, isn't he? Yeah, it's dangerous, though, when you give these free cards. Oh, he didn't check. He was just fumbling with his chips. He fumbled, he bumbled, but he ended up betting. What do you think the deciding factor was? The, it looks like there could be a lot of draws out there with the queen and nine. That, and, you know, your kings are susceptible, especially when you've you know, you've been called with your raise that your opponent has an ace. So if an ace comes off, <coughs> you know, you just want to kick yourself. And uh, so it's just, uh, you want to bet your hand and, and not give your opponent any free cards. Wong always counting his chips. He, he has a bit of a problem here, Kenna, doesn't he? Because his hand hasn't been defined. He doesn't have any shape on Martin Smith's hand. I mean, is it, it's pretty much razor fold, or is Well, he doesn't have much of a hand. He's got to realize that he's sitting on a mitt right now. He's beaten by ace, queen, king, queen, a pocket pair higher than sixes, ace, nine. He, you can tell, though, he is getting a little frustrated at not being able to drag a pot in quite a while. And you know, when you're 22 years old, sometimes it's hard to uh, rein in the patience and discipline when you have to. I mean, especially this game has been very cagey. Would imagine Wong is used to a little faster action. Yep. And sometimes the cards just won't yeah, let you, uh, you know, <laughs> let you play fast. It's a mature fold for a 22 year old. Mm hmm. And, uh, nice fold by Wong. It's so easy. We used to call it a creative put. You, you, you put your opponent on the hand that you can beat, and then you call. <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> and he certainly could have put Martin Smith on a couple of hands. That's he could beat. He's <laughs> Jack, he's King. Well, I personally would have put him on the two fives. Cause that, that would have had it given the least outs drawn to my hand. But, you know, yeah, the Ace Jack, you could have put him on. Pass. Well, that's why you're sitting with a <laughs> mic in your hand, Jesse. Of course it is. <laughs> Woodley now under, excuse me, second position with the Ace Eight. And under duress. <laughs> Raise. That's what it is. 12,000 total. Pass. Woodley had a huge second place in the Irish Open recently. Pass. Tentacle. And uh, Pass. trying Sorry. to get something going here. And we based. This time Marty Smith with the pair. Pair of eights. He's got with Woodley in bad shape. Let's see if total. Woodley's discipline and patience can hold up. Yeah, I mean, Woodley, the only other person in the pot right now besides Martin Smith. And mm -hmm. Smith just put in enough red chips to sort of set him all in. I like that raise because, you know, it doesn't give your opponent a chance to remove against you. He knows that uh, he's given his opponent no option but to either put all his chips in or fold. So a good bet by Smith. It's very hard to do with an ace-8, isn't it? I mean, as far as Woodley's concerned, to put all his chips in. Yeah. I mean, the only way he can put his chips in is if he's just Pass. lost the plot. And he doesn't, he, he's still got the script, and he correctly folds. 
might want to switch the beer. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, uh, Blindside, please, guys. that'll Just help. Uh, Just fall. I mean, has Woodley played too loose here, Kenna, or has he just been kind of on the wrong end of some situations? Both. He's played way too loose. He's not having any results, so he needs to really batten down the hatches, tighten the ship. You know, he's getting a lot of Pass. mediocre hands, and that's just what he does Pass. right there. He throws away the A6. He's seeing an ace almost every hand. It's funny how the, the deck tempts you. It does. It's like the tempstress. <laughs> Come play Pass. with me. <laughs> and if you listen to her, she can bust you with the bat of an eye. I don't like him. I'm a me. Can't make my fault to me. Woodley probably do for like Queen Nine suited. You know, and the big blind this time facing a 9,000 <laughs> raise. You know, just. Just. Uh, Lothar, Landauer, let's see what he looks at. King Jack, Kenna James. Pass. Very solid Raised play by 10, Lothar. Raised to 10,000 total. Star. Love that fold by Lothar, but Star mm -hmm. has stuck in 10,000 straight. Pass. Pass. These guys all know how to play the Pass. game, Kenna. They there's, do. Nobody no giving anything wins. up here. Airtight, as we say it. Again, Woodley tempted with an ace. Ace five this time suited. Cool. Cool. He's susceptible to the suit, as you can see. Last time he had a problem with the ace five of clubs, he did get away from it. Not this time. He has ace five of spades as we go to the flop. I think the song That's of the sirens time. has him now. Cut straight draw. Now a four or running spades could help him. Otherwise, his goose is cooked. Could he just move in here? Of course, a five would also help. He could, but the problem is that Star might sniff it out as a desperation oh. play. Call in and a call. Let me turn them over. <laughs> that wasn't and a sniff. Called. That I was a big gulp by Philip Star. He, he beat him in the pot. He did. With ace high, he beat him in the pot, sensing <clears throat> that his opponent was ready for some thievery. That's and he says, not on my felt. That was class play by Philip Starr. I like it. The quick read, use your instincts. Eight, now only a four or a five is going to save Woodley or he will be out of here. This is going to send shockwaves through the table. It's a nine. Oh, no, oh, no. Philip yeah, Starr yeah. has knocked out Ian Woodley and uh, he is out in sixth. Star, a very experienced Scottish player from around the Edinburgh area, and uh, he showed his experience there. And you're gonna be big all by yourself. Wow, Philip Star knocking Ian Woodley out. Now, Kenna, mm -hmm. was Philip Star's call, was it a great call or a call that looked great? <laughs> no, it was a great call. You know, you don't just call based on your hand value, you call based on your reading of the situation, and he sensed that Woodley was in trouble there. You know, and he made the call immediately. So that shows me he has, he trusts his instincts and he made the right call. It was a good call. He read Woodley's body language, you know, his, you know, the pressure he was going under. Woodley was just constantly being tested by the deck. You know, he was getting an ace dealt to him all the time, but all mediocre holdings. And he fell victim to the cards tonight. Let's look ahead. It looks like right now, Philip Starr, Harry D. Martin Smith, these guys are looking strong. It's a juggling match. Whoever has the two qualities that go into making a great poker player, discipline and patience, combine those together, is going to do well here tonight. Poker player or school marm? Let's find out. Pass. 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 16 total. Raised to 16,000 total. This raise has come small blind to big. Mm -hmm. Harry putting pressure on Martin Smith, who's quite capable of taking no nonsense.
I mean, like a lot of times in poker, this is this clear cut this decision. Riz. Mm, what do you guys? Not at all. But if you look at Harry uh, posture more. there, I think Smith picked up that he didn't have that big of a hand, and he's going to put him to the test. As it is, Harry, a big hand with the matchup, but <coughs> he's not to know, is he? Mm. Harry sitting very rigid while he was awaiting Smith's action, and I think that's what determined the raise here. Dimitri in a situation now where if he calls 25, we we'll only have about 50, 60 left. You know what this hand is about is who's the calmest under pressure. And I think Smith won this battle because he seems a lot calmer facing Harry Demetrio's decision, even though he has a worse tan, than Demetrio seemed facing Smith's decision. Smith does seem calm, but I wouldn't want to be what's ever between his two palms. I mean, whatever he's squeezing in there is not doing very well. Yeah, those well. fingers are getting a little red there. He needs some blood flow, so he's hoping Harry Demetrio acts quickly here. I'm pretty sure Harry's going to fold this hand. I don't see him removing at this, on this pot with King-10. That would be a great re-raise. It certainly would. It would be a great read. And he's been known to pull the trigger in this spot before, so it's not out of his character to make call. the play. He's called. He elects the flat call. He may try to take it away on the flop rather than before the flop. Stop and go. Stop and go, bet no matter what comes. They both missed. They both missed. Harry might steal position and make a move at this pot and win it right here. He's got to follow through with his instinct. Can he pull the trigger? The bullets are in the gun. God, look at Martin Smith. He's giving away nothing. He's frozen. Demetrio looking to the skies for divine intervention. I think Demetrio's thinking sooner or later Martin Smith's going to move. This length of time is smelling weakness. <laughs> God, look at the Irishman. He's frozen. Oh, man. He does. Oh, wow. He pulls the trigger. He fires the bullets. And, now and Smith there's nothing that Smith can do now. The gig is up, or the jig is up, rather. Is that what the saying is? Yeah, the gig, the jig, the cards, the hand. Smith folds. That was very strong. That's that's pretty world class there, isn't it? I mean, a, to win a wonderful, pot like that. wonderful hand played by Harry Demetrio. It took him a while, but you know when you're playing for all your chips, God love you. Take the extra few seconds to make yeah. the right decision. I mean, not all owls can fly. And Harry uh, waddling there, but uh, what a play! Not all owls can fly. No, the emu. The, em what is the emu is an owl. Now that ranks right up there <laughs> as Ireland and mixing up Ireland and Scotland. <laughs> uh, you mixing up the owl and the emu? All of a sudden, I feel confident behind the mic. You have boosted my confidence, Jesse. <laughs> <Bay. laughs> Pass. The Braveheart five Pass. deuce. Phil Starr not playing. Harry Demetrio now with a full head of steam and position is going to raise. Raise 18,000 total. Makes it 18,000 to go with the seven six of clubs. You like that play, uh, Jesse? I mean, I guess the really strong thing about the play Harry made is that it broke him out of the pack, didn't it? I yeah, mean, absolutely. It, it starts the momentum. But that is going to be snuffed out here, it looks like, by Smith, who's going to return the volley. <laughs> Revenge is sweet, is what Martin Smith is thinking right now. It sure is. And he's also thinking that this time Harry could have a real hand. I mean. Well, this is like uh, a return of serve here. 
Could you see Smith throwing this away? No, I don't see him throwing this away. I see him just right now garnering the confidence to push his chips to the middle. He raised all ends. That's, that's, that's what, what he did. That is what he does. That's first time I raised on the button, you know that. First time I put a hand on a small thing. I threw away. I didn't know Harry, I had. Harry Demetrio reprimanding his opponent for raising it. Yeah. If you're not going to win the hand, at least at least give your opponent uh, something to think about. I mean, Ken, Harry, Harry will be well aware here that 6 7 of clubs doesn't play so badly against a lot of hands, but okay, the re raise probably too much more. anyway. Absolutely. In the end, you only have seven high. It's a drawing hand. You can't, you know, you can't win unless you make a hand. Smith's hand stands alone. It's what we said at the top of the show. Ace is a powerful card in this game, which means if nobody makes a pair, uh, you know, Smith would win the hand with ace high. So that means Demetrio would have to improve his hand to win, and that's why it's no good here. 57,000 more to Harry D. Harry has no intention of calling this. He's out of this hand in about nine seconds. This is all an act to let his opponent think that he's folding a stronger hand than he has. <laughs> it's a wow, great the act. acting job, the pain. Pass. <laughs> Harry to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Harry. Uh, I don't think Martin Smith Harry, you it. sold him. He won't try that again. It's Smith. Ooh, look at Harry squeezing those cards. Ace nine, Harry Demetrio. Race to 18,000 total. Uh -oh. Look at this is going to be trouble because I'll tell you why. Harry Demetrio is going to think that Martin Smith is picking on him. We can see by the cards that he's not doing anything of the sort. But when these hands aren't, hands aren't shown down, that's when the mental game gets to you. Ego becomes a part of it. Big acting job by Smith now, not knowing what to do. Oh, he looks tortured. And Harry's not even looking at him. Re raise. He knows and feels that he's got Harry Demetrio on the hook here. He's going to give him a little tug. 60,000 total. Pass. Pass. Fold it around. Pass. All the way back to Harry D. What's that? 60 for total. 60 total. So 42,000 more to him. Quickly, the other players getting out of the way of this scrappy fight by these two players. Harry, you're going to have to dig deep here. Patience breaks through iron doors and keeps you in a tournament as well. Can he have the patience and the discipline to fold here, Jesse May? I mean, it's simply a big test of character, isn't it? Really big test because he thinks that his opponent is trying to run over him. Um, Harry D will count down and realize that he'll still have over 100,000 if he folds. The remaining chips of Harry Demetrio. The decision at hand. You can feel the pressure that he is under. <laughs> How many different ways can you count those chips? <laughs> What's interesting here is that you hear that heavy sigh. The pressure is being created by himself, not by his opponent. A huh. great laydown, Harry Demetrio. A great laydown, I say that only because of the mental anguish that was certainly going on inside him thinking that his opponent was stepping out and taking advantage. This relationship building to a huge finish. 
What a battle brewing between these two competitors, Toriadores. Yeah, it is. You know, as much as the battle is that goes out, what is seen on the table is the battle inside. I mean, you see Harry Demetrio just in pain because he's thinking that uh, Smith is, is, is taking advantage of him here. You know, and, and coming over the top and your ego and everything is saying you want to defend. You know, you want to defend your territory and uh, it takes all discipline and patience to uh, to get away from that situation. I mean, does, does Harry now have to just say settle down, keep playing the game, play the whole table, or does he have to have special plans for this man on his left, Martin Smith? Well, the professional, the consummate professional doesn't take things personal. He detaches himself from that, okay, and, and acts accordingly. But, you know, we're human and we can't <laughs> help it. You know, when we're getting picked on by the class bully, yeah. you know, we want to fight back and stand up. And so that's the battle that's going on inside of Harry Demetrio's head right now. Will he punch back? There's a haymaker in Harry D's arsenal. Still five left. We'll take his chips. We're going to Those get his are the cult, chips yeah. of the no, Northern no, Irishman, no, Martin Smith from Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, so we can't bust him because he's going to make us. Lions have just gone to five and ten <laughs> thousand. I mean, if he can't win, he would just infect with us with disease. You know what I mean? Five players still at the table. Can an average stack one hundred and twenty thousand? Oh, five and ten is big stakes. It is. Not when you hold pocket aces like Harry Demetrio here. His prayers are answered if Smith comes in, but he doesn't. He wanted that fish. Pass. He wanted the grouper on the hook. And cold. Well, he's got Philip But he did not have the cards to call. Star here with King Queen royalty might give him some action. The last thing Star wants is a pair. Little does he know. It doesn't look like the action is going to come. come. Oh, it does with no call. pair. And a call. Star moves yeah, his yeah, chips to the middle. Can I? <clears throat> Philip Star must have had Harry in a completely different place. Okay, guys. Well, I think he must be in a different place to make this move. This was very uncharacteristic of Philip Star all of a sudden. Moving all his chips to the middle with no pair, no draw. Only a miracle can help him here. He's going to need running kings or queens or a running two cards for a straight to split. We were talking about the overbet before, Kenna. You were. And th this is an example, really, of Philip Starr overbetting and only getting action from a hand that he's beat with. Absolutely right, Jesse. May we go to the turn? It's a nine. He's now, got outs now. Well, he's got an out to a split. A six will make a, both players to straight, and they'll split the pot. Star has 0% chance to win it. Yeah, Harry D's the one all in. He's going nowhere anyway. That king immaterial. And I think Philip Star is going to be down to about 45, 50,000. I mean, Harry D's kind of been gifted that money. That is beyond a gift. That is Christmas. Harry Demetrio with that pot takes a big slice of the pie. 235,000 vaults him into the lead, Jesse. Yeah, and don't think you can't go top to bottom. Look at Philip Starr, 47,000 now. And he's gonna have to be, well, he's, he's back at square one. Well, he sunk faster than the Titanic. Wow. Philip Starr, he's known as one of the steadiest players on the circuit, Kenna, but he, supernova, he went there. Well, you know, you never know what's going on inside of a person. And it's funny that it comes out at the poker table. Who knows, maybe the, the pressure of the table, the lights, the cameras, or maybe just not getting any hands, uh, enough hands for him to play, is what melts him down. What does he have to do here now? He's, he's got 47,000. I mean, it is a playable stack. Yeah, well, at this point, I wouldn't change anything. I would, as long as you're going to gamble, go with the strategy that you've elected to play and keep pushing it in there. And who knows, maybe the deck will uh, hit you in the face like it did Tony G that uh, one day, and uh, he'll be back on top, and then he can uh, decide how he wants to maneuver his game. Will the star continue to fall? Let's check out Phillip's next couple hands on this table. 
Well, I would say hot under the collar, but there's not much of a collar <laughs> to the kilted man, Philip Starr. And do you think he'll go all in if it gets folded around to him? Uh, about a 92.6% chance if someone doesn't beat him to it. John Wong here with Queen 10. <laughs> Wong's got courage to raise up here. Raise. Wow. 15 more, 25,000. Total of 25,000. And this could be Lotar's moment. Well, this, I don't think this is, I was just gonna say it might not be much of a hand for Pass. Lothar's standard and he has proved Pass. me wrong. He has sensed weakness from Wong and is gonna try and take it from him right here, right now. And as you said, Lothar could be in huge trouble. As it is, he's dominating. What did he pick up? Well, I think he, remember we were talking about that tell earlier that Wong might be giving off how he's throwing his chips in the pot. He didn't have much of a flick of a wrist there and not much height to it. And so like a tennis player hitting a ball into the net, Wong double faults and gives some much needed chips to Lothar Landauer. Great pot for Lothar. And he has played this one table, I would say ideally so far, Kenna. He's over 100,000 for the first time this evening. Fair this. Okay. Five and 10,000 are the blinds. Looking at that chip position, Harry D with 240,000 towering over the rest of the field. <coughs> yep. And don't forget about that not so long ago battle between Smith and Demetrio. That might rear its ugly head. All in. Wong saying he can go Pass. no further. He has 66,000 and he's pushed the panic button with Pass. the King Six. Yeah, well, he, he wants to win the blinds before they come to him. 15,000, he didn't want to go through the blinds again. He'd rather gamble it up. I like that play. Nothing wrong with that. Risk reward there. Yeah, you got to be willing to take a stand before your chips get too low. Otherwise, you don't give your opponents a chance to fold because your chip stack gets so low they call simply for value, and you don't want to get to that point, so it's better to to gamble uh, and hope that you can win on a, on a bluff. Pass. Come on. All in. Here goes Philip Starr again, king nine suited. The same reasonable play. And this is gonna put Harry into the tank a little bit. 55, 55, 55, 55, 55. It is, Harry's got a little bit of a decision here because Mr. Starr you know, still has quite a few chips. And even if Star has absolutely nothing, it's still likely to be 50-50 against Harry, isn't it? That's right. And Harry facing a decision for about 25% of his stack. So it is a serious decision, as you can see. Rub of the eyes. Seems to me he can afford to fold here, Ken. I, I don't know. Well, the problem is he's he's seen some of these bizarre plays and he really can't make any sense of it. So that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to figure out the puzzle cool. and make sense of it. And he cannot. So he says, I'm just going to look you up and make the call and and take take a shot against you right here. And because he just called, it's interesting for John Wong who wants to see how much it'll cost him. It'll cost John Wong just about exactly half his stack. And this is the one problem of letting your emotions show at the table. Harry with that deep thought and pain staking Boy. thing has Boy. drawn Wong into the pot <laughs> because he sensed that Harry wasn't how that strong. How do I get myself in these spots? And aptly he says, how did I do this? because you basically told him that you didn't have much of a hand when you took about a minute to think about it. Yeah, Wong so now able Wong, to read telegraph. Exactly, he calls for value now getting three to one. 
and his short stack. No brainer, isn't it? And uh, Dimitriou feels like he's priced in now. Harry has stuck half his stack just about in. Wild is all in, Star is all in. We could have a double knockout, Ken, if the fives hold. If the fives hold up, he will. He'll get the double knockout. First time we've seen this. We go to the flop. Here it is. Demetrio looking for all safe cards. Star and Wong looking for their pairs. Oh, it's hit Philip Star. Incredible. Now, interestingly enough, Wong still has a side pot to play with Harry D. And Harry D's leading that side pot, Kenna. It's not significant as the main pot. Very unfortunate turn of events and cards for for John Wong here to Wong. lose to Philip Starr with just the with the worst kicker, the river. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a five! five. They're both out. Jesse, it's a double knockout. Harry D's done it, and uh, okay, that was amazing. Hang on. It was amazing how that play backfired on everybody, but Harry D. Oh, sorry, I love it. And John Wong looking like he's just been hit by a truck. What do you think about the play by Wong? Well, he was trying to win a big pot there, wasn't he? Yeah, actually, I don't mind his play that much. It, yeah. 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 Harry D slipping into a massive chip lead. I think he's got about, well, geez, he's got nearly 400,000 right now, three handed. That was quick. Very quick. Yeah, yeah, as, long as, I, as long as I beat John, as, as long as I yeah. beat John, I'm getting some of it back. How much of poker is down to luck? Just two cards for Harry Dimitriou to catch in the deck, and one of them comes on the river. He's just come second over in a WPT event in Vegas, so knocking out two in one go comes easy to him. Not very nice though, when you're the one receiving the bad beat. Both Phil and John are with our commentators. Well, the first double knockout we've seen in this tournament, Philip Starr, John Wong, <laughs> commiserations. Now, Philip, first, it was all going so well for you. It seemed like you really had command of that game. And then the, the all-ins. Well, I thought, I thought he was at it when he had the aces, and I thought, well, better to move in before he does it, and I'd just have to... You didn't want to have to make a play on him on the flop? No, it was better to get rid of him, because he could have been lucky enough and hit anything there. But it was, he didn't need it, he already had it, he got the aces. Well, it, but it seemed like something snapped, did, uh, you had, that was out of character for you. We hadn't seen you make that play to that point. Was there something amiss, or was it just yeah. a calculated play? No, he's arrogance. Yeah. Yeah. Play. They made it worse, it was English. <laughs> <laughs> now, John, I have to ask you, how much of a how much did it factor in your decision in this last hand that Harry was, you know, under a lot of indecision on what to do with his hand? Did that affect your decision yeah. at all? Well, I knew that I was um, up against small pair, basically. I didn't know exactly what I was up against. I wasn't too sure what he had, but I, I put him on, um, I thought I had live cards. Uh, so there's only one spot, right? So. I had to gamble there. I couldn't, mm -hmm. couldn't wait around, and I, I was pretty confident that I was up against a 50-50 or, or right, something right. along that line. Yeah, so I, I just stuck the, I stuck the chips and um, I got myself quite low, so I had to make that move. Well, with two players out, this game now is broke kind of wide open. Harry D like a freight train. Can he close the deal three way? What an incredible hand we've just seen. A double knockout by Harry Dimitriou, hitting a five on the river to take out both John Wong and Phil Starr. You couldn't write that one. We're down to three in one sweep. Let's get back to the action. Harry D showing no signs of slowing up. His collar turning up just a little bit, just as his chip stack does. He's going to tell you what, Harry has done all the knocking out at this table. He's going to be like McDonald's. Harry Pass. D, Mickey D, a billion knocked out. <laughs> all, in. all in. Not messing around. Smith is going to need to find a pair or a big ace, I think, to call. 
Instead, he finds the king seven of clubs. I mean, is the problem that Martin Smith might be thinking about now, Kenna, that if he doesn't draw the line Pass. now, Pass. The, by the time he does draw the line, he won't have enough chips to compete? It was a thought, a fleeting thought. <laughs> Very fleeting. <laughs> and look, and Harry looks down at his owls saying, you know, thank you, thank you, my lucky charms. <laughs> for letting the cards fly my way. I'm just an ordinary person. Anyone can do what I've done. I mean, I, I like to think I'm, I, I've applied myself rather well, and I have worked hard at my game. I've read everything I could possibly find, not because you're going to learn something from the book, but it gets you questioning certain situations. Uh, I'm discussing hands with friends all the time. Uh, I think that's a very important learning tool. Um, just discussing how other people would view a hand, how they would play it, gives you an insight into, you know, an alternative way of playing a hand and whenever you're sitting down at the table and you see some great players there like Phil Ivey or, or uh, Ted Forrest you watch how they play their hands and hopefully you can take a piece from everyone's game and develop your own style. You know I mean after this heat is over there may be a run on Golden Owl statues I don't, I don't yeah. know who's got the concession but I want in. Now you said <laughs> earlier um, Jesse that some owls don't fly how do they get from tree to tree? Do they walk? <laughs> they climb. Very, very sharp talents. So some owls never leave their nest. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this now. Harry Demetrio, a Raised card rack all of a sudden with pocket kings. Pass. Just mercilessly taking it out on his opponents. <laughs> mercilessly. Is that a word? Oh, it is. It, it is. is a word? <laughs> it is. Thank goodness. Us cowboys sometimes use words that aren't in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You make me look good, though, uh, Jesse. Talking about climbing owls. Sorry. All in for Martin All Smith. In. Is this just a factor of him trying to get his chips in first? Exactly right, Jesse May. First one in usually comes first one out. <laughs> this has been unlucky for Martin Smith, I'll tell you what. Sure is, his timing is horrific here as Lothar Landauer wakes up with the pocket rockets, two aces. He's just trying to think, can I draw Harry Demetrio into this pot if I act like, you know, I just want to call? Well, what Lothar has just found out, Ken, is that even if he does call, he only has six blue chips left. It's not likely to affect Harry's decision, is it? No, it's... It, it, it. Call. call. But still, he reluctantly calls. <laughs> just in case. It's a borderline right. decision for Harry. And, very uh, interesting. Harry, with the decision... I've done worse things in my and life. Under the realization that he could win yes. this table here and now. But, um, right, he elects to fold. And he'll be happy that he did as he looks at the, the two aces. Yeah, Martin Smith from Belfast facing an impossible task here. Not impossible. It's been done against me once or twice, let me tell you. It's very possible. 16% worth of possibilities for Martin Smith. And this gets a wrinkle now. It certainly does. A good a flop as Smith could hope for. Jack nine makes an open end straight. Eight, nine, 10, Jack. He's gonna need a seven or a queen to complete the straight and take this pot away. It's a six. One card to come. Looking for a seven or a queen to steal this pot away from Lothar Landauer, it is a queen! Oh my goodness! And Martin Smith doing his best not to smile, but what a gut stomach punch for Lothar Landauer. That hurts, That's that hurts. It stings, stings, stings. <laughs> And believe me, if he wasn't on camera, those fingernails would be in his mouth and not tucked under his chin. That is painful, ladies and gentlemen. That is very, very painful. To have victory snatched from you. I mean, you talk about how cruel the deck can be, how 
tough a game poker is. And uh, looking at that hand, it's so clear. Smith, he moved, he couldn't do anything else, but Landauer woke up with the aces and then denied. 8-10, the straight draw on the flop, the queen on the turn, completing the run. Straight beats two pairs. An eerie hush has fallen over this table. Landauer gutted, Smith a bit embarrassed, and Dimitriou just very chip heavy. Well, I like your description there, gutted. And that's, when you lose, you know, a pot like that where you're such a favorite, you know, this would be like me beating Seattle slew in a foot race. <laughs> it's, it's like betting on Tampa Bay. Um, and Lothar going to stick him in. Olé. At least this way he's got a chance to maybe triple up here, Kenna. Yeah. Sorry, could you put your cards on the glass and for me there, please? Will That's Harry and Martin coolly gang up on Lothar and try and knock him out? That is a proper strategy. You know, you can only win if ev if well, your other opponents are knocked nice. out. And the usual strategy here is to just check it down and uh, hope that one of uh, either check. you or your opponent's hand check. beats check. the person that's all in. Landauer needs a five for a straight. Check. As check. it turns out, a queen. Oh, look at 15, this. 000. Smith making a pair of sevens and betting it. And Harry does not like that. No, he doesn't, but uh, wow, he's going to call. He's going to call in hopes of cool. catching a four, thinking that that would end it right here. Smith clearly to his own tune. Check. Check. And uh, Martin Smith managed to take 15 grand off Harry D, but Lothar Landauer yeah. out so here. Five sevens take the lot. Through no fault of his own, losing with the Rockets. He'll be out in third place. I have to say, Lothar played a great game <laughs> from yeah. where I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sometimes hey, Marty, matter, you were the big blind that time. So now you're yeah. going to get the ball. Harry D with about a two to one chip lead on the Northern Irish. Just wait one sec. Regarded as one of the most experienced pros in Germany, but he's not going to take this title. Out in third, Lothar Landau is talking to Jesse and Kenner. It doesn't only happen on the internet. Lothar Landauer knocked out. Lothar, aces cracked. What can I do? I mean, I got the aces and uh, I couldn't win the hand. Um, it's all of, you can ask the situation like this to get aces and then you get cracked. Yeah, I hope I, I get sometimes a chance to, to, to give fist beat bats. I get all the time somebody <laughs> back, to be honest. I mean, it's but nothing you can do. Some days the cards go your way, some days not. Huh? You, you have to have a balanced attitude if you play this game, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, 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 I chose the, the, the right tactic for me. I mean, everything worked quite well. I mean, I was very confident that I can win it, even... Uh, uh, Harry had a lot, a lot of chips. So I was not afraid at all to, get, to right. play heads up against him, to be honest. I mean, but what can I do? I mean, I... Right, and, I, and a credit to your game. I said that to Jesse. When you were sitting on 86,000 and they had 300,000, you looked very comfortable yeah. out there. And that's a man who's, you know, confident of his talents. But sometimes the deck just doesn't uh, let you out. Yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. But this table destined to be a battle of the two Toreadores, Harry Demetrio and Martin Smith. We'll see what that head-up match is going to bring. We're down to just two. The wise owl, Harry Demetriou, who tonight has had some incredibly lucky cards fall his way, and the steady Marty Smith from Belfast. This will be one heads-up battle you won't want to miss. Down to two, Harry, Demetrio, and Martin Smith. Now, kind of early on in this match, <laughs> it, it, it seemed like they were the whole story. That, that got yeah. lost somewhere. Well, we sensed it, didn't yeah. we, that, that the conflict was brewing, and it did. And now that everybody else is out of the way, the gloves are off. And uh, let's see what uh, kind of battle ensues. Well, they're both very aggressive players, aren't they? Well, they're very aggressive and very calculating and situational. Harry even more so probably than Smith. But, you know, and with the chip lead, that's going to give him a very big advantage. So Smith is going to have to gamble early, hope that he doubles up, and then we've got a match on our hands. 
So Smith under the gun a little bit here. Let's see if he can pull it off. It's four on one now. Now it's head to head, but Harry Demetriou and his three friends, his three furry friends are taking on Martin Smith from Northern Ireland. What? Now, now <laughs> owls are furry? First they walk, <laughs> now they're furry? My oh my Just goodness. <laughs> We're going to have an owl education, uh, Jesse, after this show. Who is it? Who uh, is it? Friendship. It's Harry That's Demetrio. Harry That's who it is. <laughs> well, Harry has not <laughs> only <laughs> the advantage <laughs> in companionship, so but the chip lead. <laughs> Played 70 hands to get to this position. And uh, Martin Smith, he's, he's a big fan of, you know, you say some players like to hide their... Some players don't like to, to give off tells by freezing, and some players give off lots and lots of them. Martin Smith is just freezes up completely when he puts a bet in, doesn't he? Well, he likes he likes to have the poker face, not give any information by being still. I find that very difficult to do. And as always on this show, we like to look at the cufflinks. <laughs> we almost got a... We'll try and check those out uh, a little later. Right now, we are we have action to 50, by Demetrio, total. making it 50,000 to go with the Queen yeah. Jack of Hearts. All in for Marty Smith. He's got the pocket pair. Demetrio has the over cards. I can work it out from, I can work it out from here. Okay. Two, three, twenty. And this is a bit different than the ace nine for Harry, is it? Yes, absolutely. But what's it going to take for him to call, Jesse? What percentage of his stack is he willing to risk is the question right now on the table. Well, I mean, right now he can fold Kenna and I imagine still have over 350,000, which is over half the chips in play. That's one thought. His other thought oh, is, oh, cool. if he calls, I can win it right here. <laughs> well, that is the decision for Harry D. And uh, Martin Smith. <laughs> Chip. Well, Martin Smith won't be too, too upset about this. I mean, no, not at all. It's basically a coin flip. And Harry D, not a big fan of throwing, putting chips in the pot and throwing his hand away, which is one of the reasons he called. And he's only a slight it's underdog as we go to the flop, Jesse. There's the nine. The queen doesn't matter. <laughs> I saw the queen first. Wow. That is interesting because that's a bad hand. Nine hearts, nine spades. Yeah. Well, Both players hitting their cards. Much more important for Smith as that gives him trips and leaves Harry D with only a 5% chance to win this pot. But there's one of his outs that he needs. Yeah, it's a 10 now. A 10 ball will give him the straight. Anything else, and Smith goes the leader. And this seems to be Martin Smith coming on strong. A very key pot for Martin Smith. I think this was a long call by Harry Demetrio. Thank you. Marty Smith, the new chip leader with 374,000. And Kenna, he's at a high point right now. He's peaking in chips. How strong is his confidence? Very strong. You want to peak at the right moment, and the right moment is heads up. If you're going to win, the tournament, and there is only one winner here tonight, you want to peak at the right time, and the right time is when there are only two players left, and you're one of them. Yeah, I mean, Martin Smith will have a lot of experience playing heads up. He's one of those big winners online, and uh, I believe he plays quite a bit of heads up there. Limit and no limit. Well, this is the first time that I've seen this young man play. As we get a Nice look at his cufflinks. It looks like he may be a backgammon player. Those look like backgammon cufflinks. Now those are the owl's cufflinks. I'm, I'm pretty sure. No, those are the are, are those the owl cufflinks. Yes, those are Harry Demetrio's cufflinks. There's the cufflinks. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Smith. Well. Thank you for that that <laughs> shot, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean. You know, in, in Belfast, they're still on the buttons, but... <laughs> well, Harry Demetrio throwing me off. I totally expected owls on his on his wrists, but he come with the backgammon board. Well, I'm a fan of buttons myself. It's easier to get them in, <laughs> in the hole. Well, Harry G, first to act, but... Oh, he's 
<laughs> the, the dialogue is, why can't the shuffling machine shuffle these cards a little faster? His, his dialogue is, please, God. <laughs> Give me the rockets. Let me escape from the cellar one more time. The wings are coming off that collar. Let's hope his wings don't come off. He has a very reasonable hand, Ace Jack. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Raise. Forty thousand total. Forty thousand straight, says Harry Demetrio. Marty Smith, you gonna give this up? You're gonna put your opponent to the test. A move in or a fold would be the proper play here. Call. Call. Calling. Smith wants to see the flop. Now is there 80,000 in there? Uh-oh. 10-7 deuce, I believe. Great check. A clever check by Harry D. How does he know? Ooh. That smells check. trouble for Great Harry check. Demetrio. He needs a queen here. Ace or jack will be deadly. It's not. It's a nine. Now a value bet from Smith. 50,000. Now, Harry's going to go into the tank and start thinking, what can I beat? Is there anything I can beat? What kind of bluff can I beat? He's called my raise before the flop. And uh, I think that Harry's going to get away with just losing his initial raise in this pot. He's done an amazing job to get this far in the hand without losing any more money. Absolutely. He's played this hand very shrewdly, not falling for the trap that Pass. Smith had laid. Very well done. Very well played by Harry Demetrio. Look how close Martin Smith is to his. His hands are next to his money. His money's next to the line. He's ready for the footfall. <laughs> and Harry sitting back. His chips are back. I think Harry's prepared to sit there all night long. Well, Harry's trying to get comfortable. You know, he's been, he he's, uh, was shaken up a bit there. It's understandable. But, you know, he's not to be rattled easily. Cool. No race. Remember, this is a winner-take-all heat. Only the winner moving on to the semifinals to play for $200,000. That's just the first prize. That's just the first prize, correct, Jesse? Half Check. million dollar prize pool. Five checked. I always find it amazing how often when their heads up, both players, they have very similar hands. They do. Very good point. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 now you're humoring me, can't I? Check. <laughs> to Check. meet you with the flush draw here. <laughs> <laughs> And that's... Oh, that's a straight card that's for straight, Smith. Yeah. The problem is for him, he's not going to get paid a nickel here because Demetrio has absolutely 000. nothing. Pass. I like <laughs> Harry D's demeanor. Well, I mean, he, you, you know, he's, he, you can tell he's comfortable and confident now. He's regained his composure. Yeah, you, you called it. I mean, it seemed when he called those two re-raises that he was anxious to get in, but now that he's gone short stacked, I mean, he's pretty much convinced Martin that he's not here to just go away quietly. He's he certainly has now. You know, that's why when you have your opponent, you know, against the ropes, it's like two boxers. You could smell the blood and you could sense his knees were weak. You kind of want to go in for that knockout punch while you can before your opponent can reassert himself as Demetrio is here. 45 total. And this is a little bit on the arm total. here from Harry, but he's That's played cool. so quiet. All, All in All from in. Martin Smith. Well, this is a tough spot for Harry D because he's committed quite a few of his chips. <sighs> he may feel right. like he has to call here. Remember, you never have to call. It's always a decision. Seems like he timed this raise so well, but Smith just 
picked up the big cards. Sometimes your timing, though it may seem perfect, the cards just won't cooperate. And in this case, he is in very bad shape. If he should call this, he would find himself a three to one dog. Okay, I call. Call. He has wow. called. He's not gonna like what he sees. No, the calculator <laughs> is about to break. I was in bad shape anyway, but. Well, he's going to need the furry owl to walk out to the middle on this one. Jesse May, if he's going to survive. <laughs> Fives have been Harry's lucky card, but he's all in here. Have those owl get those feet a fleeting as we go to the flop. Deuce, deuce eight. Yeah, that's no help. No help. He's going to need a five. Here's the turn. And a diamond. Nine of diamond gives him now additional outs to the flush. Any diamond or a five will be the savior for Harry Demetrio. Yeah, 12 cards, I think. Here's the river. Is the owl walking as we go to the river? It's a five! Oh my. Oh my oh, goodness, the really luck of the owls <laughs> survived! <laughs> it was the five on the river again. It was, was the it was the owl walking! You <laughs> called it, Jesse <laughs> May. You know, some people recently. think that a five looks like an owl walking. And uh <laughs> There it is, a <laughs> footprint on the river. <laughs> hoo hoo hoo. It's a big exhalation, big sigh of breath from Martin Smith. The owls say hoo, 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 Martin Smith, boo, 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 King Jack. <laughs> As you can see, no help for Harry Demetrio on the flop. A little help on the turn, but spikes the five on the river. Fives and deuces beat King High any day of the week. A crucial double up for Harry Demetrio to keep him in the match. It's, it's quite ironic because of what I was telling you before about the fives. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were too, but it's just. Who says poker players aren't superstitious? From out to chip leader, Harry Demetrio, 356,000. You know, when you think about the stakes here on the turn of a card, can I? getting lucky at the right time. It's, uh, it's a hard pill to swallow. Will Martin Smith hold up here? He's still got 250,000. Well, you know, uh, Jesse, it says, they say that character is defined through adversity. Both players being faced with adversity in this heads up match. Yeah, well, so. Let's see now how Martin Smith reacts. Yeah, nobody said it was cool. gonna be easy. Smith has ace king. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is right back. Right after the last hit, Harry's uh, right moving back. Turn over. At you, maybe. The owl got chip happy here. <laughs> Keep the chips in the center. It, Holy cow. You know, there's a lot Shepard, of chips dominated. in this pot. <laughs> Especially someone like you with hope. We know time. that. If Smith should lose this pot, you better pocket those owls, because he might just reach over and strangle them. Because he finds himself once again a three to one favorite as we go to the flop. King and the Jack. I think I'm wow. dead. But I'm as Harry G said, chance. he's in terrible shape. It has to be Jack. Straight. Jack. Or either Jack or Jack. <laughs> <laughs> either a Jack or Jack. Oh, it's a Jack. Oh Unbelievable. My. Oh. Where can I get the owl? I need the owl. Oh, poor Martin Smith. Make sure he brings them back because, <laughs> ladies, the refrigerator is closed. <laughs> this is it. Only two cards in the deck now for Martin Smith. One, One of two kings, uh, Jesse, but the writing is on the wall as we go to the river. A harmless oh, eight a falls. Luck. Harry Demetrio, <laughs> our champion. Yeah, and he dominated two hands in a row, and that was you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who, who? Talk about the three wise men. Forget about them. It's the three owls. The three tenors. No. And uh, I mean, well played by Martin Smith, but this was all Harry D tonight. Well, sometimes the cards will not let destiny. I don't know about well done. I just got extremely lucky. Let's hear from a valiant runner up, Marty Smith. 
it was a tough table, but I didn't think it was without a chance. Um, you know, when I had a table like that, basically a lot of people are playing the same sort of game, and whoever gets the cards is uh, is going to win the thing, and that's kind of the way it happened at the end, you know. Our winner tonight displayed everything you need to win in poker. Skill, aggression, bluffing and luck. We'll all be after one of those gold hours now. Harry Dimitriou into the semi-finals. He's over with Jesse and Kenna. Well, Ken and I are here with the three owls. No, it's Harry <laughs> Dimitriou. Congratulations, Harry. Well played. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, this heat, I mean, you play great, but it did seem to be dominated on all play, you know, all avenues by the river cards. Well, that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, we all get lucky, we all get unlucky. We like to win with brilliant plays, but the bottom line is you need to have a critical bit of luck at a critical time. And and it, I had more than my fair share You today. did. And Harry, do you think the Owls came into play tonight? Of course they came into play. They always come into play, as you can see them. I Tell us go, the right, story of the Owl. Well, you know, I mean, Sarinda nicknamed me the Wise Owl, and... Uh, I got a little card protector with owls, and if you look, they've got little jewels for eyes. <laughs> and what happens is because they're low on the table, can I see that? They can see the dealer dealing the cards, <laughs> so that means they subconsciously tell me what my opponent's whole cards are. <laughs> so whenever they got decent hands and I got a difficult decision, I make the appropriate later. You've been around the game well. Do you think you've got a balanced attitude now towards luck? I mean. Can you ever get one? Well, the fives were particularly... I mean, he shouldn't feel too bad. I mean, I've lucked out on him twice in a row at the end there. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's, <laughs> that, you know, that's the way it goes. But the fives are particularly significant. I came runner-up in a big tournament recently in Vegas at the Mirage. I came second. I picked up a lot of money. But it actually cost me 600000 a five on the river twice. It's ironic <laughs> that I've hit fives on the river twice wow, today. Wow, that's what you You know, at significant about, right. time. So... It goes round, it comes round. You the know. balance of the luck right here, buddy. <laughs> That's right. That, that was the balance of the you luck. You make your own luck. You all like to play well. You don't want to be lucky, but you do need luck. And uh, you I mean, certainly yeah, do. I mean. That's the way it is. Well, we all enjoyed the game tonight. Congratulations again to Harry D. He's going to the semifinals. Look forward to watching him there. But join us next week on the PartyPoker.net World Open.